Now, for the banks, rural customers are also very important. In case of villages, you will find Kisan passbooks, Kisan bahis. These are issued by revenue authorities in villages. They contain photographs, address proof, address proof of the land, which is in the form of a khasra number or some other identification, chak number, etc., of the farm or the fields. So they are also valid address proof. So you must study them and you must you can take them also as valid address proof in KYC. Now for monitoring the bank transactions, the banks have to categorize their customers into three categories, high risk, medium risk, low risk. Now let's talk about low risk. Salaried class person like me, you. So we salaried class people are categorized into low risk accounts. Now in these uh, low risk accounts, the number of transactions is comparatively less and uh, the low risk accounts are not very closely monitored on day to day basis by banks. So low risk accounts are those which are by people who are from salaried class or pensioners or households or students. Similarly, small firms, small enterprises whose total annual uh, transactions are not beyond 10 lakh rupees and who are not having very large and frequent number of transactions. So they are categorized into low risk. Then let's talk about medium risk accounts. In medium risk account, we take up accounts of those people who are engaged into business firms which are uh, engaged into business then private and public limited companies which are having annual uh, summations in the range of 10 lakhs to 1 crore per annum then uh, those firms which are having foreign exchange transactions but maximum not more than 60 percent of their remittances are in the form of foreign exchange transactions they are considered medium risk accounts then we talk about high risk accounts. High risk accounts are those which are like public limited companies, private companies, firms, individuals having submissions above 1 crore rupees per annum. Similarly, we take up uh, into high risk accounts those accounts which are of persons from foreign origin and uh, those customers who are not in uh, not opening face to face uh, they, they, those who are not having any face to face transactions with you those people who are having 75% or above foreign exchange transactions similarly NPA accounts these are all categorized into high risk accounts similarly accounts of NGOs trusts, charities and accounts of organizations receiving donations from India and abroad are also categorized into high risk accounts. Now let me tell you a few words that we have used here like NPA. What is NPA? We will discuss about NPAs in detail later but briefly speaking NPA means non-performing asset. If a person borrows money from the bank and doesn't pay back or doesn't pay back regularly then it is called NPA, non-performing asset. Every person who takes loan from bank, right, becomes an asset for the bank because that account is an asset for the bank because that will generate interest and income for the bank. But if that borrower doesn't make payment, then it is not performing. Therefore, it is called NPA non-performing asset so NPA account is a high risk account then another word that I used was NGO non-government organization the, those organizations which are not government organizations but they are engaged into social development activities and therefore 
they are taking aids grants they are receiving charities they are receiving financial aids from india and abroad they are categorized as ngos then there are certain countries any customer who is domiciled in those countries his account is also categorized as high risk accounts and banks have to closely monitor that account these countries are nigeria myanmar guatemala ukraine philippines egypt cook islands then angola cuba zimbabwe afghanistan iraq libya russia azerbaijan moldova kazakhstan georgia uzbekistan belarus armenia then uh, tajikistan turkmenistan and a few other countries so while opening bank account of a person domiciled in these countries or connected to these countries you have to be very careful because uh, many of uh, the i mean persons living in these countries are engaged into some or other activities which are which require very close monitoring and therefore people connected with these countries are categorized as high risk and banks have to closely monitor their accounts banks have to periodically submit various reports to financial intelligence unit of government of india which is called fiu fiu means financial intelligence unit which monitors various transactions taking place in the country these important reports are like cash transactions report cash transaction reports reports contains those details of transactions where cash transactions about 10 lakh rupees have taken place so you have to follow rbi guidelines and prepare cash transactions report then counterfeit currency report counterfeit currency means the fake currency like a fake currency note of 100 rupee or 500 rupee or 1000 rupee that is called counterfeit currency so a report on that counterfeit currency report has to be submitted then suspicious transactions report str str means if any transaction is of suspicious nature then a detail of that has to be submitted to financial intelligence unit then npo transaction report npo means non profit organization ngo ngo npo is one same thing so all the transactions in which npos and ngos are involved there are guidelines as per that you have to prepare a transaction report and submit to the financial intelligence unit the kyc does not end with bank account opening you don't think that kyc means you have to follow kyc only at the time of opening of the bank account no <coughs> it will continue afterwards also you have to monitor transactions depending upon the risk sensitivity of the account you have to pay special attention to all unusual large transactions and if there are any unusual patterns in transactions you have to monitor them as a banker if there are any high risk accounts then you have to maintain intense monitoring and report about them to the financial intelligence unit of the government of india if there are any transactions which are having a very high cash transactions or very high value transactions again you have to monitor them all cash withdrawals and deposits of rupees 10 lakhs and above in individual accounts then you have to prepare detail on them in cash transaction report and submit to financial intelligence unit you should not issue travelers checks demand drafts telegraphic transfers of rupees 50000 and above on cash basis if you have to issue travelers checks demand drafts or telegraphic transfers above rupees 50000 then ensure that you do it against the bank account only against negotiable instruments like check etc only and not against cash as per the prevention of money laundering act 2002 suspicious transactions means all those transactions which give rise to a reasonable ground of suspicion that 
the proceeds are related to crime the money is related to crime or where it appears that there is unusual circumstances or unjustified complexity in some transaction or where there is no economic rationale or no bona fide purpose behind some transition then it is categorized as suspicious transaction suspicious transactions are those which are having involvement of funds from illegal activities which are there to hide or disguise certain illegal activities there is no apparent lawful purpose behind those transaction there is no business interest in those transactions there is unusual characteristics there is insufficient information there is suspicious information or where there is no proper identity of the persons involved in financial transactions so when there is some thing missing some facts are missing you have to become suspicious then this is called suspicious transactions so you have to report about suspicious transactions periodically in suspicious transaction report to financial intelligence unit